Nothing really prepares you to the moment you strike thick ice on a, on a vessel like the Nordica. It's a 13,000 tonne icebreaker built for these conditions, but it's loud, the vessel shakes and groans, and you can hear these large chunks of ice scrape along the hull. We'd been traveling for about 12 days after leaving Vancouver on this 10,000 kilometer journey to Greenland. And the first ice appeared almost out of nowhere. It was what they call first year ice, thin, mushy, what the ship's ice navigator likened to a sea of porridge. But by the time we reached Franklin Strait in the center of the passage, it was much thicker, still first year ice, but with inclusions of multi-year ice, which is bluish, has survived several summer melts and was as hard as concrete. Despite the power and the strength of the boat, the number one rule with an icebreaker is actually to avoid ice when you can. Breaking ice can be dangerous, it's uncomfortable for the crew, and it burns through much more fuel. And so the Nordica spent much of its time zigzagging through the flows when it could see gaps in the ice. The Arctic is a very confusing place. Objects that appear close can be miles away, there are mirages that give the illusion of giant ice cliffs all around. There is smoke rising from the ice, and compass readings mean nothing at all. They're distorted by the proximity of the North Pole. There are also these giant white radar stations, remnants of the Cold War. They're no longer manned today, but I couldn't help imagine what it must have been like for the operators back in the day, spending these long and dark winter months listening for signs of Soviet activity. The ship's ice navigator was a retired Canadian Coast Guard. He's been sailing these waters for more than three decades, and he's really seen the ice change. There is less of it, it's thinner, it leaves earlier in the summer, returns later in autumn. The data shows that since 1979, the Arctic has lost, on average, 34,000 square miles of ice each year. That's like the size of Maine or a country like Serbia. Scientists say it's not coming back in the foreseeable future even in the best-case scenario envisaged by the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement, sea ice will largely vanish from the Arctic during the summer within the coming decades. And so this site is something most children will never be able to experience. Now our journey through the Northwest Passage set the record for the earliest transit ever. Now of course that does say something about the changes to the ice, but it could give the wrong impression. Talk of the opening of the Northwest Passage I think is still far off for most vessels. It remains a dangerous place with uncharted waters and unpredictable weather. And if something goes wrong, the closest help could be thousands of miles away. We left the polar waters grateful for a safe passage, of course, uh, but also acutely aware of the fragility of this environment and also the unique privilege of being able to see it before it disappears. Mm -hmm.